Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games and game development tutorials. Unity recently released a new major version, 2020.2, and there are many changes to the shader graph within. Today I'd like to show you some of the bigger ones and contrast them with Unity 2020.1 shader graph. I'll be focusing on the universal render pipeline, so I won't mention any high definition render pipeline exclusive features. I used Unity 2020.2.1 F1, Universal Render Pipeline 10.2.2, and the Shader Graph 10.2.2 in this video. The first thing to take note of is the Asset Creation dialog has been rearranged. To find the old Create Lit, Unlit, and Sprite Graph options, look under Universal Render Pipeline. You can also create a blank graph and then set the type yourself later. The option to view a graph's generated shader code has also been moved to outside the graph window, to the Graph Assets Inspector. When you open a graph, you'll notice the old master nodes have been replaced with what Unity calls the master stack. The stack makes obvious the separate vertex and fragment stages of a shader, a distinction that's sometimes important while graphing. For instance, if you need to read a texture to change the vertex position, you must use the Sample Texture LOD node instead of a plain Sample Texture node, since only the LOD version is available during the vertex stage. The stack also allows you to reorder fields and place them closer to relevant parts of your graph. It's nice for organization. Speaking of fields, the Albedo field has been renamed to Base Color. One downside to the change to the master stack is that you can no longer create multiple master nodes as you could in 2020.1. In 2020.1, this was useful for debugging, since you could create a second master node to test a specific part of your graph, and then toggle between activating the two master nodes. In 2020.2, to do the same thing, you must route data all the way to the stack to test it in the scene. The second big change is the new graph inspector panel. This groups graph, node, and property settings into one window. Think of it kind of like the inspector window in the scene editor. Graph settings are accessible at all times. From here, you can modify shader settings that were previously in the gear menu of the old master nodes. There are a few new settings to take note of, however. Under active targets, you can add or remove render pipelines that you'd like this graph to be compatible with. Which targets are available depends on which packages you have installed. This feature is useful if you're still prototyping your game and haven't finalized which pipeline to go with. Just make your graph work with both. Also available is the visual effect target to make sure you can use your shader with its cousin, the visual effect graph. For Universal Render Pipeline, you'll see all the gear options in this dropdown, as well as a new material setting Switch between Unlit, Lit, and Sprite Graphs here. Notice when you change the material type, the master stack automatically adapts to your choice. Thankfully, it will not remove fields to which you have attached a connection, allowing you to quickly switch to an unlit material for debugging, with minimal disruption to the rest of your graph. There's another new setting here for Universal Render Pipeline, Clear Coat. The URP Lit algorithm now supports a clear coat map used to simulate materials like car paint. Enable this option to take advantage of it, although I had trouble getting it to work with the graph, so your mileage may vary. You can see how it's supposed to look using the complex lit shader. Before we move on, notice the old float precision has been renamed to single. As of now, custom function node function names still use the underscore float suffix, so keep that in mind. All right, let's move over to the blackboard and take a look at property changes. First off, take note that the vector1 property type has been renamed to float. As mentioned before, property settings are now editable in the node settings tab in the graph inspector. Unity has also changed how they store color fields under the hood. If you're updating an old graph, it will ask you to upgrade any color properties present. This should not affect the end result of your shader, luckily. Finally, you can now duplicate properties easily by pressing Ctrl D 
or right-clicking on them and selecting Duplicate. Moving on to Nodes, all node settings now appear under the Node Settings tab in the Graph Inspector, with the notable exception of these mode dropdowns. The most important node this affects is the Custom Function node. Next is my favorite addition, Redirection nodes. Also called Elbow nodes, double-click on any connection edge to create one, allowing you to clean up any spaghetti code you've cooked up. You can delete these nodes one by one, and Unity will rebuild the original connection for you. Unity's also made some important changes to a couple of nodes. The branch node now actually uses a branch inside, allowing the compiler to optimize out a side of the branch if it's never used. You can take advantage of this fact to toggle parts of your graph on and off at design time without affecting performance. Moving on, the Sample Cube Map node has been renamed to Sample Reflected Cube Map, and a new Sample Cube Map node has been added, allowing you to sample a cube map directly. For advanced users, Unity has added the Linear Blend Skinning and Compute Deformation nodes to hook into animation systems, as well as the Parallax Mapping and Parallax Occlusion Mapping nodes to use with height maps. That brings me to the end of this quick overview of shader graph changes in Unity 2020.2. Although it's by no means an exhaustive list, I hope this will help get your project up and running in the new version. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I upload game development tutorials every Wednesday. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss them. I also really appreciate any likes. It lets YouTube know to recommend this video to others, and it really helps out the channel. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. What do you think about these changes to the shader graph? Are you excited to use any of the new features? Thanks again for watching, and make games.